Hi friends, excited to be with you today. If you didn't get to hear yesterday's message, I encourage you to do so because this is part two of yesterday's message. As you know, we've been preparing for the day of Pentecost and it is almost here. It's not just a celebration of something that took place 2000, about 2000 years ago, but it is about a welcoming afresh of the same Holy Spirit that fell upon disciples back then, but the same Holy Spirit falling upon disciples today to prepare us for the new era of his church. Well, I wanna go back to this passage that I shared with yesterday from Luke 24, verse 49. We often read from the book of Acts, but I love that Luke captures Jesus talking to his disciples. And this is what he says to them. Behold, I send the promise of my father upon you, but tarry, but you tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you're endued with power from on high. So here's Jesus with his disciples. And he starts off by saying, behold, in other words, take a look, (laughs) see what I'm saying to you. That's a strong word. It's a word that says, pay attention. Jesus is saying, listen, I will send the promise of the Father upon you, but here's what you're gonna do. You're gonna tarry, and he gave them a specific place, the city of Jerusalem, until you're endued with power. So the Father will do his work, and your part is to tarry. That word tarry simply means to remain, to wait. So you tarry until, There's an until. Sometimes, you know, I I was thinking about the day of Pentecost and I thought, oh Lord, we'll stay in that living room as long as you, uh, you are wanting to do something in us. And then I realized, I think there's a ongoing waiting as, uh, as the Holy Spirit continues to pour himself on us. It's not just a one time be filled. And then here you go. You're ready for everything. No, no, no. We wait upon him and he does something. But I I believe with all my heart, we're coming into a season where we're going to wait on the Lord more than ever before. But it's not a, a waiting as in, oh, we have to wait on you. No, it is a waiting knowing he's wanting to do something on the inside of us. So Jesus said, I'll send the promise of my father. I will do my part. And here's your part. Here's all you have to do. All you have to do is wait, wait until Wait until you're endued with power from on high. So notice Jesus was letting them know in your waiting, you will know. You will know when the Holy Spirit has come upon you because you're going to be endued with power. Something will be evidently different in your life. It won't be just a few goosebumps. Maybe somebody prays in in tongues and then somebody gives a prophecy. And then Monday morning we wake up and everything's back to normal. No, no, no. What Jesus was telling them is your life is going to change. You're gonna walk in the things that I walked in. You're gonna do the things that I did. You're gonna understand God and the throne and the kingdom of God so much better. You're gonna be strengthened to walk uprightly. I mean, God, Jesus was telling them, you have to have this Holy Spirit come upon you. You have to have the power of God in order for you to walk the plan that I have for you. But all I need you to do is to wait, is to wait to tarry until you're clothed with power. Oh, you know, if you walked out of the house naked, you'd know it, and so would everyone else. But let me tell you, that word in dude means put on, clothed with. Oh, when you are clothed with, it's evident to everyone. It's evident that the Holy Spirit is upon you, that he has clothed you with himself and with the power of God. He says that you will be endued with power, power. You know that word in the Greek, dunamis. It's the power of God. It's the ability of God. It's God actively living on the inside of you. Oh, I believe for so many of us, you know, mountains that have seemed so big, because of the the Holy Spirit coming upon us and enduing us in in doing us with power, that mountains that looked huge, we're going to be able to look at them accurately and go, "You have got to be kidding! That's all you are." I'm telling you, revelation of what God has said is going to fill us. Why? Because the Holy Spirit is coming to uh, dwell in us in a new, I don't know how else to say it, but in a new level of activity, in a new level of his life in us. What glorious days we get to be a part of. This is no light matter. God is inviting us and saying, come, 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 prepare yourself because I'm about to pour out my spirit upon you. Well, I, I want to read to you from Luke 11 because, you know, when we're coming together to wait, what, what does that look like? 
What does that look like? Does that mean we'll just sit around? Have you ever waited at the doctor's office? <laughs> right? What do you do? You get on your cell phone, you do emails or you answer texts or you go through Instagram or Pinterest or I don't know, sports apps. I don't know. I don't do those. But you you wait and you're, you're kind of just waiting for time to pass so you distract yourself. Well, that's not what Jesus was telling them is, hey, stay busy distracting yourself until the Holy Spirit comes. No, there was a purpose for their waiting. There was a purpose for their waiting. You know, in the book of Acts, it says that when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were with one accord in one place. But listen, what were they doing? They had been praying. They had continued in prayer and supplication. Well, I don't know what all, everything they were praying about, but I do know this, since Jesus instructed them to go and wait in Jerusalem until he sent the promise of the Father, the Holy Spirit, they had clear instructions on what they were waiting for, who they were waiting for. I believe, and I believe I have reason to believe, that part of their prayer was asking for this gift of the Holy Spirit. They were with one accord following Jesus' instructions to wait for the promise of the Holy Spirit. Notice it says in one passage, it says when the, Holy, uh, when the day of Pentecost come, they were sitting. They were sitting. Well, were they talking to each other? I'm sure there was interaction. As a matter of fact, the book of Acts captures there was some interaction, but it was around what God was doing. But they were also with prayer and supplication. I believed, and I, and I shared this early on, that in our preparation, God was calling us to unusual times of prayer. Unusual times of prayer. Well, you may think, well, it's already almost Pentecost. I didn't really pray. I guess it's not for me. Listen, the beautiful thing about God is when we turn, when we say, Lord, I missed it, but today I'm turning, He treats us as though we've been doing the right thing. That's it, It's called the grace of God. So maybe you haven't spent unusual times in prayer, but today, today is the first day where you can begin to say, Lord, I position myself. I want to be like those who waited upon the Holy Spirit. So you wait, but you come and you pray and, and you bring your supplications to the Lord. It's you engaging with God. As a matter of fact, listen, this is what I've done is, Lord, I desire to desire you in ways I never have. I want to long for you afresh. I want to be, you know, this may not be the right word, but I want to be obsessed with you. I want to be so much more kingdom minded. I, and there's this hunger. The more I pray, there's an increase of the hunger uh, of God in me for the things of God. So even if you feel like I'm not even hungry to pray and, and, and to gather together and, and do all that, just to ask him, see humility says, God, I don't even feel all that, but I'm asking you today, would you cause me to be hungry? And then step out there. You know, if one minute for you is an unusual amount of time in prayer, then pray that minute, but do it with your whole heart. God's not looking for formulas, but he is looking for a heart that is intensely after him. And he is calling us to wait on him with what? With prayer and with supplication. Well, again, I believe those disciples were praying and asking for the Holy Spirit because that's what Jesus had told them was going to happen. So I want us to look at Luke 11. Luke 11. I want to read verses 9 through 13. This is Jesus speaking and he says this. So I say to you, ask and it will be given. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives and he who seeks finds. And to him who knocks, it will be opened. Now here's Jesus giving a comparison. If a son asks for bread from any father among you, will he give him a stone? The correct answer is no. Or if he asks for a fish, will he give him a serpent instead of a fish? No. Or if he asks for an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give, listen, the Holy Spirit, and listen again, to those who ask Him. To those who ask Him. That word ask in the Greek denotes insistent asking, supplication, coming together. 
uh, or asking him, not just a one time, hey, Lord, fill me with your Holy Spirit. But it's a separating yourself with these unusual, if I could say, times of prayer, asking for something specific. This time we're asking for someone specific, the very Spirit of God. So it, it, that word ask represents presenting these requests to the Lord, knowing that he wants to distribute the Holy Spirit. Isn't that wonderful? Jesus uses the story and says, listen, if you who don't have perfect love in you know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more? How much more him who is love? How much more will he give the Holy Spirit to those who ask? Notice it didn't just stop and say, how much more will he give the Holy Spirit? No, what is our part? We ask, we come and we ask. So as we've been preparing for this day of Pentecost, I ask you to engage in prayer more than ever before, whatever that looks like, engage in prayer. But I want you specifically to ask the Father for the Holy Spirit. We must ask him. And let me tell you, again, Jesus is convincing human beings, how much more will the Father give to those who ask? What is he saying? The Father wants to give you his very spirit. Jesus didn't qualify it based on history, based on culture, based on sins, based on how good you've been. The only qualifier to receiving the Holy Spirit is if we ask. Our part really is so easy. It requires us to engage, but I mean, he's done, he does the impossible. What he wants from us is to engage in our hearts and ask him, ask him for the Holy Spirit. And God will be faithful to give you the Holy Spirit. Who will he give this Holy Spirit to? Everyone who asks. Because remember, Jesus started out, everyone who asks receives. He who seeks finds. And to whom who knocks, it will be opened. He didn't say it might, maybe. No, he said it will. And as you ask between now and Pentecost, and as you come together with your household or those that are coming together, and you ask him, the Father, for the promise of the Holy Spirit, he will give you his very spirit. Oh, and his very spirit will do something in you. It will be the right thing. He will do in you exactly what he needs to do in you in order to be able to walk the plan of God in this day and in this time. Let me tell you, uh, Isaiah 60 says, darkness covers the earth in deep darkness. This is part of the arising. But you who have the glory of God says you arise and you shine. What causes people in the middle of darkness and deep darkness to not get under the darkness? The Spirit of God endued with power that causes you to arise. It's not you mentally thinking, how can I arise? Oh, see, when the Spirit of God comes upon you, you can't help but arise and shine. We see that through the book of Acts. Ordinary human beings, but when the Holy Spirit came upon them, they spoke the Word of God with boldness. The timidity was gone. The fear of man was gone. They even risked their lives. They knew they were willing to die for the gospel's sake. They were willing to do whatever God said for the gospel's sake. They walked with increased signs and wonders. They prophesied. The work of God was evident. What, is, why, what are we called to arise and shine? What, are, what does that mean? It means men and women, sons and daughters of God, all ages, filled with the Holy Spirit, endued with the power from God so that people can see he is real. Oh, receive him. And how will you receive him? Ask him. God desires to give to you his very spirit. Hi, I'm Jerry Dearman. Thank you for watching today. To not miss out on any of our videos, you can subscribe by clicking here. Or to watch another video, you can click here. Go ahead, pick one.